Your eyes are the window to your soul of belief, inspiration, the willpower. And just like when you put something in your mouth and you chew it, they can either enhance the physique of yourself or be the demise depending on what you're eating. And the same goes true with what you see. There's a visual diet out there that's good and bad. There's negative energy if you look at it and you focus on you allow that to come in, it'd be a demise of your willpower. The demise of your self-confidence, what you can be and what you believe in. You focus on the negative so much, you start to believe that negative that exists in you. That's a negative, unhealthy diet. Failure is not an option. You can't even let it sink into your brain. It took not even a second. You have to know that this thing is going to work. Come hell or high water, whatever it is that I set out to do, it may not happen in six months, it may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years, but at some point, my dream is going to become a reality. I don't care how good you are in anything, you don't have discipline, you ain't nobody. And nothing without discipline. Because you give up on the slightest struggle without discipline. Discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. Just because we're going through a hard time, we have a setback, that that's not a part of the journey. I'm going to tell you right now, God will allow things to happen in your life to grow different things in your life. So a lot of us, we going through a time right now in our life, we're like, man, God don't love me, man. Life ain't fair, man. Everybody else getting blessed and everybody else having the right things in their life and everybody else is going through everything. They're happy, they joy. And I'm in this moment, let me tell you something. When you look back on your path, it's the moments that were difficult that built your strongest faith. When the alarm sounds, it's time. Rise. Despite fatigue and soreness, Curse the warmth of the bed. Curse the comfort of the pillow. Fight the temptation of weakness. Get up and go. You go after and you give it all you have. If you lose, at least you try, man. I failed. It's 10 times more of a man than someone said, what if? Because what if never went to the arena? When you guys find a fear, that fear will either create you or destroy you. This is yours. You're the captain. You're the master. You're the foreman. You're the general. You're the head. Don't give control of this to nobody. Everything is going wrong, right? It seems as if the wall's falling down. It seems as if, man, don't nothing work. Oftentimes, it was decisions and choices made far prior to that moment that's contributing to that moment, seeming as if the walls are falling down. And so when you look at shortcuts in different areas and aspects of life, I always think to the point of, like, man, you know that's an illusion. Right, you know it's an illusion. You know sooner than later you're gonna end up in a dead end. You know sooner than later you're gonna get to a point in space and place in your life to where when it doesn't work, it's gonna be hard to turn that finger back. Like when you point and you blame them, it's gonna be hard to turn that thing back and say, nah, this me. It was the hardest times that built your strongest strength. It was the hardest times that built the endurance in your life. It was the hardest times that built your belief. So you might be in a season right now where the world is trying to lie to you. The world is trying to tell you that your life is over. The world is trying to tell you that you ain't special. The world is trying to, trying to tell you that you ain't got no worth, that you ain't got no value. The world is trying to tell you that better days aren't ahead for your life. The world is trying to tell you that nobody else will love you, care about you. The world will tell you that your dreams are over. And I'm gonna tell you, it's a lot easier to believe those things when you look at your circumstances. But I tell you all the time, and I wanna tell you right now, you can't trust your circumstances. You gotta trust your faith. I love fear, and the reason why, behind every fear is a person you wanna be. Fear is self-imposed, meaning it doesn't exist. You create it, you can destroy it too. It's an intangible. If you face your fears, guys, you will realize it's not that big. And once you face it, you go, oh my God, man, I spent all this time running from it. It was so small. If I just faced it, my God, not only did I face it, I beat it back, energy's never lost, transfer. That negative energy, that fear, 
It's destroyed. It comes back in. It's confident. She's like, where else am I? Where else am I capable of? Where else am I holding my back from that I'm capable of more? Where am I running from? I don't need to. Where else can I overcome? Push through tough times. I'm sure many of them. But as you push through those, you become more. As you become more, something magical happens. You don't just grow. You expand in your spirit and your soul and your capacity and your skill. And all of a sudden, fear becomes less and less a part of you. Do not reason with weakness. You cannot. You must only take action. Get up. And go. The thing that you'll resent isn't whether or not you make it. The thing that you'll resent is, now that you know you can, will you actually try? If you find a fear, the quickest, the easiest way you can beat it is initially, right when it comes in. If you allow it to sit, it will grow root and start breaking you down, destroying the potential of the person you can be. Again, the champions, guys, it's not their potential, it's not their genetics. It's their perseverance to always show up, always willing to fail, because in failure, that's part of success. Success is not, you know, a marathon of life with just ups. Success is formulated through failures, through facing your fears, through falling down and getting back up. That's what creates the champion. Whatever you've done up to this point, all that it really is, is a duplication, it's a reproduction of what you believe subconsciously that you deserve and what's possible for your life. Operate out of your imagination, not your memory. I don't know everything. I have not accomplished everything. I'm not where I want to be. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still trying to get better. You've got to position yourself and stop pouting. Stop crying. Stop looking at what other people are getting and look at what they're doing. And if you start doing it, you'll start getting it. You don't get out of life what you want. You get out of life what you earn. Stand up. Go forward. Go out in a blaze of glory, fighting with everything you've got, every bead of sweat, every drop of blood, until your last breath. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, He's just processing it. That's all he's doing. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough, when you get to where you're going, then he's going to toughen you. If you got to be more caring along the way, he's going to let you have some trials come your way that's going to have to produce that in you. When you making these moves, when you going to work, when you when you executing these dreams, you doing this for your life. And it ain't nothing more valuable than that. So have your heart when it's time to accept those challenges because stepping out on your own, everybody gonna challenge you. Stop needing a trip. Stop needing somebody to give you a sticker on your head. Stop needing to hear you an honor student. And do it for the pride of who you are. Do it because you can't. Get on A because you can't. I don't care what your friends are doing. So I leave you with this. There's no black or brown. There's no, there's no difference. You are excellent. Now stop playing small. You are excellent. Stop playing small. You are excellent. Stop, stop taking the hand that they dealt you. When you come to a place in your life where you have to make a choice, and I think this is actually true of every choice we ever make, but it's more evident when the choice is more weighty, let's say. As the choices that lay themselves out now in front of you are weighty, you aim up or down. And there is always an agent of temptation at every choice point, enticing you to aim down. 
who are you becoming? So I think in the context of becoming, it's like we're always becoming, we're always on our, on our way to becoming something. Are you becoming a better version of yourself or are you becoming somebody who is moving away from, you know, what I would characterize as, as your true essence, investing our energy and how we're conducting ourselves or relating to the world or responding or reacting to the world around us. Your brain spends most of its time trying to make sure you don't notice because you'll go crazy if you notice everything. But when you decide what's most important to you, your brain goes after it. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that to something general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. The more clear you are about exactly what it is you want, the more your brain knows how to get there. Deep down inside, I believe most people on the planet are heartbroken. Why? Because they have betrayed the visions, ambitions, values, mission in their heart. They have betrayed their talent by buying into the mass hypnosis that the world has sold them. Most people, their misery, their misery is derived by their inability to sit quietly in a room by themselves. But really, if we're all responsible for everything in our lives, then there's no one to blame. All is in perfect divine right order. And we are all doing our best according to the understanding, awareness, and knowledge that we have. Our point of power is always in the present moment. We create our future by our thoughts and actions of today. And we can know that no person, no place, and no thing has any power over us. We create all our situations and all our circumstances by our thinking, feeling patterns. And then we usually give away our power by blaming others when things do not go the way we want. I think faith is a form of courage. You know, if you're hurt by life, and you will be, it's understandable that you might react in a nihilistic and hopeless fashion and become anxious and depressed and cynical and bitter and all of that. Uh, that's a bad pathway. And I think part of what helps you through that is faith. And, and part of that faith is that it's incumbent upon you and actually in your best interest and everyone else's to maintain faith in the fundamental goodness of existence, including your own, despite the evidence to the contrary. Faith is the courage to not take that path despite the evidence that that might be justified. Play at Edison. You can't play at Misty Copeland. You can't play at world class unless you bring yourself away from the world and do the practice, do the training, do the thinking. You have flow within you, you have genius within you. Most of us are so distracted, they're so overstimulated that they don't create the silent spaces where their genius can present themselves. Instead of going backward, instead of decaying, get stronger, get better, grow and learn and develop and live. Live in defiance of the weakness and in rebellion against the decay. Fight them as they creep in with their offers of instant gratification and immediate rewards. Fight them for every inch they try to take. Do not surrender any ground ever. Hold the line. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. Do whatever is required. It's you. It's on you. You got to make that happen. Nobody's going to bring it to you on a silver platter and say, here's your dream manifested. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right? 
And it's worth it. Not only do you want to stop being scared and do that thing that you don't know if you can do or not, but you know what you got to do is you got to start taking the steps now. Because when you're 18 years old, your life seems like it's going to last forever. And I will tell you right now, it's not going to last forever. And those years go by like a summer's day. And the next thing you know, you look up and you're 36 years old or you're 44 years old. And that time's gone. You cannot get it back. You cannot get time back. So those dreams that you have, those goals that you have, don't put them off another second. Not one second. Get on them. And go out and make them happen starting right now. Everyone in the world has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves. And they, what I call, shit all over themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. It's like if you want to take the island, burn the boats. Because if there's no way to go back, it's amazing what happens when it's a must to do something versus a should. When you get tired, when you get fatigued, when you get down, when you're in a slump, it's your habits, rituals, routines, and your standards that carry you through. And if you don't have good habits, you don't have good rituals, you don't have good routines, always in your life you will fall down in bad times, in slumps, in fatigue, and in stress. You've been chasing the wrong things for far too long. You've been chasing the wrong people for far too long. You've been running away from your purpose to something that looks good for your life but is not meant for your life and you're tired. It's the thing that allows you to go the extra distance, to dig just a little bit deeper and push a little harder and get after it. So when it doesn't make sense, logical sense to go on, that's when you gotta use your emotion. That's when you gotta use that anger, that frustration, that fear to push yourself harder, to push yourself to say, I don't stop. At some point, everything's gonna go south on you. Everything's gonna go south and you're gonna say, this is it. This is how I end. Now you can either accept that or you can get to work. That's all it is. You just begin. You do the math, you solve one problem, then you solve the next one, and then the next. And if you solve enough problems, you get to come home. You fight the weak emotions with the power of logic, and you fight the weakness of logic with the power of emotions. And in the balance of those two, to say to yourself, I don't stop. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge. And the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world and you take the slings and arrows of fate. And you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail and fortune might do you in, but it's your best bet. But the habit of hesitating, of questioning, I think it kills more happiness, more possibility, more dreams than fear, failure, and every excuse that you have. Because it's so subtle. It's an amazing thing about passion. 
If you love something, if you have a strong passion for something, you would go to the extreme to, to try to understand or try to get it. If you have to walk, you would go get it. If you have to beg someone, you would go get it. You're exhausted. You're dreaming. Because you're running after something that God didn't intend for you to catch. You're chasing something that's not meant for your life. Stop chasing that person's approval when you already been approved. Life is bounded by mortality, but that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend, and you develop by contending, and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. Because if you're thinking, then you're not taking action. And if you're not taking action, then there's no consequence. And if there's no consequence, then there's nothing to be afraid of. The overthinking can be an excuse for actual fear. You gotta become a risk taker. Write that down. Viscott said, if you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? You give yourself time for the right opportunities to find you. You give yourself time for the right person or people to find you. But if you keep running this race of trying to please, of trying to seek validation, of approval, you will ruin your life. Don't just talk. Don't just think. Don't just dream. No. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you actually do. So, do. What is most important is that you have to dig deep down, dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who. And I'm talking about not what your parents and teachers want you to be, but you. I'm talking about figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy. In this world, is it fair? It's fair enough. So where's your excuse? I see a lot of finger pointing, tons of people blaming other people for different shit. One big thing is this, fear. Fear keeps a lot of fuckers from being successful. It keeps you making excuses for yourself. Fear lives one place and one place only, and that's in your mind. Don't let fear do us up. Stay hard. You gotta get in a hurry to make a difference in your life. Time is running out like that. It is impossible to be a maverick or a true original if you're too well behaved and not want to break the rules. You have to think outside the box. That's what I believe after all. What is the point of being on this earth if all you want to do is be liked by everyone and avoid trouble? The only way that I ever got any place was the breaking some of the rules. There's some necessary losses in life. When you decide acting in your best interest, you're going to lose some friends. Everybody's not going to approve of you. There's some people that won't like you. It's all your fault. Everything. Every bad thing that has ever happened to you is your fault. Now I use the word fault to shake people up. I know that it's making you mad right now. I know that it winds you up and you think that I'm victim shaming. And when you get beyond that and you realize all I'm trying to do is remind you that you are never, ever, ever, ever a victim unless you choose to be, everything in your life will change. You're always in control, even if that's a lie. And I don't care if it is. I'm gonna own it, because the second I give away my power to somebody else, I'm now at something else's mercy, and there is some line that I can't cross, that I'm no longer in control. 
that inevitable wall is creeping up on me. When you push so hard, something's about to give. And I started to give. My mind started to break down. I started to feel my legs starting to hurt. I started feeling dehydrated. I started feeling sorry for myself. I started looking around. No one knows how you're running. Why don't you go ahead and just stop? Call your girl, have her pick you up. And that's when I feel like a little And this is when your mind has to fucking change. You gotta start thinking I'm the greediest fucker in the world. Your dehydration? Lick fucking lips. Your legs are all sore. You feel like you got shit splits and stress fractures? No, you don't. You got sore fucking legs. Get out of your head and stay hard. If you don't start getting after your dream, it'll get old and dated and stale because you keep wrapping it in cellophane. You keep waiting till you know a little more. Till I know a little more. Till I know a little more. If I just knew a little more, that's BS. You don't need to know a little more. You need to execute a little more. You need to get after it. You need to make some mistakes. Perfection is the lowest possible standard. Quit trying to be perfect. You don't need to know everything. I'll simply the rules of work like hell. Trust yourself. Break some rules. Don't be afraid to fail. Ignore the naysayers and stay hungry. You choose your damn sacrifice because the sacrifice is inevitable, but at least you get to choose it. And then there's something that's, that's even more complex than that in some sense is that the problem with being a child is that all you are is potential and it's really low resolution. You could be anything, but you're not anything. So then you go and you adopt an apprenticeship, roughly speaking, and then you become, at least you become something. And when you're something, that makes the world open up to you again. You will live in a prison. You will live unfulfilled, trying to please the world. The first step to being happy is trying to please everyone else. Let me tell you something. It is an impossible task. Somebody somewhere at some time is not gonna like what you do. No matter how great you are, somebody's not gonna like that. No matter how much goodness you give to the world, somebody's not gonna like that. Always gonna be somebody who gets offended by your greatness. Your life is before you. You fill these pages with your hopes, with your passion, with your dreams. You write. You write. You write the greatest story ever told. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. Be the best of whatever you are. Dreams is, uh, they should be pure. I, I think a lot of times you know, when we're born into this world, we actually wind up going backwards. And it seems like the more we mature, uh, the more responsible our dreams become. And the more governors we put on ourselves and our ability to dream and to reimagine. And it's always a fight for us parents and you know, for you guys to make sure that your dreams always stay pure. And so it's not a matter of, of, uh, of pushing beyond the limitations or expectations. It's really a matter of protecting your dreams, protecting your imagination. That's really the key. And when you do that, then the world just seems limitless. I don't know who needed to hear this, but I gotta tell you, you must be some kind of amazing if you think about all the things that have come up against you and you're still here. All the things that tried to stop you from getting to where you are now, to stop you from trying to have confidence and self-esteem, and yet you may. Question, who are you? Or at least, who could you be? Answer, part of the eternal force that constantly confronts the terrible unknown, voluntarily, 
and part of the eternal force that faces chaos and turns it into productive order. And all of this, being very difficult to understand consciously, but vital to our survival, is transmitted in the form of the stories that we cannot help but attend to. And it is in this manner that we come to apprehend what is of value, what we should aim at, and what we could be. When you're stretching out, when you're taking life by the collar, you're going to get thrown to the ground again and again and again. But when you have determination, and you know that what you're doing is right, it gives you your life, it gives a special meaning and power to you, you will discover some things about yourself that will begin to electrify your personality. You'll begin to discover some things about you that you don't know you've got. One of the greatest steps towards success is self-confidence and the greatest builder of self-confidence is self-esteem. Doing the things you know you should do so that at the end of the day you have this great satisfaction. The old prophet said the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Not the sleep of a goof-off man. Not the sleep of a joker, no. The sleep of one who labors. That's the sleep that's sweet. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. In order to have what you want in life, you must stop staring at the top of that mountain. You must stop creating excuses for why you can't or don't feel like it. And you must put your head down and look at the first step in front of you. And then you must take the action and start walking toward what you want. I don't believe everybody can be the biggest and the fastest and the strongest and the smartest. But I believe you are number one when you get up in the morning and say, today, I'm going to give it my best shot. I believe you're number one when at the end of the day, you can honestly look in that mirror and say, today, I gave it my best shot. Winning is in all of us. We all want to win. But the path people take to get to winning, Everybody wants the end result and they want to feel the sugar and the, 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 the confetti and all that other stuff. But what you have to endure to win, no one wants to talk about. The reasons have power. Your reasons will drive you. When you have doubt, when your faith becomes weak, your reasons will fortify your faith. When you have an inner conversation, say, no, don't do that. Your reasons will become your rod and your staff to comfort you, to take you through those challenging moments. So boy, don't you stop now. Don't you sit down on the steps cause you find this kind of hard, but I'm still going, boy. I'm still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal star, but we must keep moving. We must keep going. You have to lose your fear of failure. Failure is a part of the process. People who never fail, never try. You have to fail. You gotta get it wrong to get it right. Moments away from beginning your journey, through life, moments away from starting to change the world for the better. It will not be easy. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Some of us were stuck. Some of us were stuck. Because we don't understand the how. 
I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know. If we allow the I don't know to keep us in a place that we know it's not meant for our life. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Life will whoop your butt so bad, you will be so miserable, you will catch so much hell, you say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. The biggest purpose in life isn't all that shit. It's how you respect yourself, how you look at yourself. That's in every fucking journey. Those are the biggest words of all time as far as respecting yourself. So don't look at this dread and punishment. Look at those words as a lifestyle. Stay hard. You have to think the way everybody else doesn't. Otherwise, you're just gonna produce ordinary results. The world is full of ordinary people. Full of ordinary. You know how they love to say, you know, greatness is inside all of us. Yeah, you know what, it is true. Greatness is inside all of us. But for most individuals, that's where it stays. I'm talking about every single day, the spirit, the disposition of being able to show up on the strength of our integrity and our character and bring everything we got into an environment. That doesn't mean we'll always be our best, but I'm talking about specifically being able to bring our best. Elite are considered the elite, not because of their rise. The elite are considered the elite because of their response. You've got to die as you are now. You've got to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. There's no place for it. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. Those I can't catch a break guys, yeah. get them the f away from me. I can't, I can't be around those guys. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't buy it. Because everybody has bad breaks. Yeah. I've had a shit ton of bad breaks. But you know what I did? I, I stayed up. Yeah. And I thought through it. And I, and I figured out what the f I did wrong. And then I went back. And I've had a bunch of shitty breaks. Everybody has. But you got to realize when you have the shitty breaks what that is. It's an opportunity for you to reassess, reboot, get better, figure out another way, find another way through. It's just, just little challenges. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. You have something special. You have talents and abilities in you that you don't even know. I think if you can put others before yourselves, then if we do that, then you can find some happiness. At a minimum, you can leave the world in better condition than you found it. And if you can pull that off, I think if you can pull that off, then you can die with a clean conscience and you can die with a smile on your face. And you can leave a smile on the face of the people you left behind. First one, this too shall pass. Whatever you encounter, whatever you go through, and I say this obviously uh, referring to tough moments, right? This too shall pass, right? Every storm has an expiration date. Every storm runs out of rain. This too shall pass. The idea is that you have to walk through the entire world in order to get to the center. So you have to go everywhere and do everything to turn yourself on enough so that you can handle what's coming towards you. And you do that voluntarily. You open yourself up to the challenge. You know, all you do if you shrink from life, right. the more you shrink, the smaller you get, unsurprisingly, right? Sure, yeah. And the more you move forward confidently and willing to take on the challenge and the, and the potential danger, then the stronger you get. You know why people aren't successful? Because they're afraid of success. Because what happens once you get to success? All the stuff you have to keep doing 
to stay there. Will that force unseen, the offspring of a deathless soul, can hew away into any goal? Though walls of granite intervene, you will be what you will to be. Let failure find its false content. And so therefore, as you look at yourself, you've got to have this vision of yourself beyond your circumstances. You've got to see yourself every day. I can do this. I can make this happen. I'm blessed and highly favored. Good things are supposed to happen to me. You've got to see yourself every day. Day after day after day in the face of so much defeat, but to have the will and determination to keep going. Success is going from failure to failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. The success is going from the failure to the failure to the failure and still being excited to show up. Everyone in life has a situation at some point. You either become the victim or it catapults you. Every single individual. Get it, you might be going through a storm, you might be going through a struggle, you might be going through a hard time, and I get it, it's valid. You might be going through something that's unfair. As I said before, the thing about the storm, storms are gonna come. You know what I mean? And you gotta understand this, when storms come, you gotta allow the storm to do what the storm does. You gotta make sure your perspective is your power and not your prison. I get it, maybe your life may suck, somebody did you wrong, I get it. But what you gonna do about it? It's life. Bills are gonna keep coming, the time is gonna keep ticking, the globe is gonna keep spinning, people are gonna keep living, and you have to do something about it with your life. Every hero you guys had was called an idiot, crazy, a loser, you must break society's status quo. So, status quo is normality. It's, it's alive but not living. It's death on a stick, guys. The belief of the individual can overcome thousands of followers. One person with a belief overrides thousands of people with just intent.